Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Happy 2019, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. And today is January 11th, 2019, and it's the first show back for the new year. And um, I want to show you my favorite video for the holidays. And this is, this is my friend Derby. It's my godchild. Okay, ready? Go. Okay. Wow. She's treating it like a sex toy. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. Okay, so a little bit of porn to start the, the new year. No, not funny. Okay. Now, okay. Um, I'm so excited because today I have... Greg Tefuro and his father on. But before I introduce them, I want to tell you about my good news. My good news is that I am with um, World of Wonder. They do RuPaul's Drag Race. And I am reading The Drag Queens. And I'm so excited. We've done seven already. And if you want to go to wow-presents.com, wow-presents.com, you can watch them. And um, the, the, the reason, one of the reasons I love working with these kids, these people, is because they live their truth. And how many people in the world really live their truth? I mean, I know so many gay people who took forever to get out of the closet, and some aren't even out of the closet. And I mean, it's, it's horrible not to live your truth. Okay, so the light just came off. Okay, there's already ghosts in here. The light, the brand new studios. We're in brand new studios in Burbank. I can't believe that the the, the spirits followed us here. But anyway, um, if you just keep in touch with at char.net and you'll know my my Instagram and everything else, you'll figure out how to how to find me and how to find me reading for for the drag queens. Do, can we show the, the this video? Okay. I have been seeing spirits since I was a little girl and I always knew things when I was a child and I've developed it to a place where I can help others with. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Char. What's your hi, name? Jiggly. I'm hugging you. Hi. Is that okay? Yes, hi. Was it, that's such a cute name. Thank Did you, you give yourself that name? Yes. This is Sunny. So I'm going to read for you. Okay. So the way that I work is that I communicate with spirits, so you're not afraid of the dead, right? No. Okay. I and mean, as long as it's not going to be like the conjuring, we're cool. No, that's all the positive energy, <laughs> okay, yeah. all the goodness, love, and God. That's all I connect with. Cool. Okay, so you ready? Yes. Ready. Okay, okay, let's go. You can just sit over there. I wasn't expecting anything. I just walked in just blank. Let's see what happens. Just open-minded to anything, and we'll see what they have to say. I always say a prayer of protection before I do this. Sure. Not that this is a religion, it's not, but as in everyday life, there are good and bad people. Yeah. There are positive and negative energies in the spirit mm -hmm. world, okay. and I'm very aware of connecting to the highest level of goodness and love. 
I don't go to any other neighborhoods. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. We ask the universal consciousness and God to guide and protect us. Anything in, near, around, or about us that is not of light, go back to where you came from. I just throw that in just for safekeeping. So I see somebody that's a, a deceased that's an A, is it spelled A-N? A-N. A-N, is it like Ann or Anna or? Close. Is it, it, but it's A-N, is, it, is there uh, well, a? Well, I mean, does it? It's not Agnes or? Yes. Is it Agnes? Yes. Okay. And is Agnes your mom? Who is mom. it? Your mom. Oh, your mom's here. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so that starts on January 15th, and um, I'm excited, and I, I hope you guys tune in and watch it. Now, this show is all about you and your birth signs and astrology, and I have talked into, because he doesn't really do press, but Greg Tiforo is has been in astrology. He's been on my show ever since I started three years ago. And his dad is the one that taught him, Bill. So I've got both of them. I talked them into coming tonight, and I'm so excited. And we're going to go through all the sun signs and see what's in store for you for 2019. Hi, guys. Well, before we start talking about everybody else, I want to talk about you. Because okay. you launching this project, you happen to be launching it right around uh, a lunar eclipse in Leo, you being a Leo. Oh, and to signify beginnings and endings. So this is it's a new chapter beginning for you. Oh, I'm excited. Wow. I feel I feel good about it. And I, I I just as I said to everybody earlier, I love working with the drag queens because they live their truth. But you want to hear something funny? I, I was talking to my friend and she's from Long, Long Island. And I said, I said, guess what? I said, I'm working with World of Wonder and I'm and I'm reading for the queen. She goes, oh, my God, you're reading for the queen of England? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be something else. Could you imagine? <laughs> I said, no. You know, tell her about her grandchild that she's going to have uh, next year. Right. This year. How? End of this year. Right. Pretty soon. No. They didn't waste any time. But Wait, anyway, I just, say? I need to, Bill, I, it's so wonderful to meet you. It's just my honor and my pleasure to have you on. How, how long ago did you start doing astrology? Uh, about 40 years ago. 40 years. And did you teach Greg? I fell into it very haphazardly. I was always interested in uh, spirituality and esoteric kind of things. Right. I had actually had what I thought was a visitation from someone that I was very close to after they passed. Oh, and uh, I began looking into reincarnation. I'm an advocate of reincarnation. Oh, wow. I've been strongly in it. And then about 40 years ago, maybe a little less than that. Like right, right around the time that I was born. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. No, it's, it, it's actually maybe 35 years ago. Yeah. Uh, my... My wife was asked if she wanted to go to this class with an astrologer who was rather renowned in Philadelphia. We were living outside of Philadelphia at the time. Okay. And she had four children. She said, gee, I don't know that I can go, but I think Bill might like going. Would you mind if he joined you? And so I did. And that was my initiation. It was meant to be. Yeah. And so, of. and did, have, have you had private clients through the years? No, never. <clears throat> I, okay. I've read charts privately. I've never been paid. In fact, I have an aversion to this. This, this is so like, this makes me so happy because most times people come on the show because they want to promote something. You do it for the love of the work, which is why Greg does it. And it's just so refreshing to have you guys on together. And so, Greg, how did you get in interested in it? While I mean, I always say, like, for all intents and purposes, if he did 35, I, I've always said that on some level I was raised on it because I'd watched my dad doing readings for people and, uh, you know, relatives or people you'd work with or people that you didn't work with. People who asked me to do their chart, and I was very he'd do it all. He'd do it a lot. And uh, I'd see him, he'd know things about people 
that he shouldn't know. I mean, you know, you just target in on their personalities, what? knowing them or events in their lives that may have happened. And then, you know, I'm one of four kids and my mm. siblings, I mean, we were always around it, but they weren't as interested. I guess I got interested because I wanted to see if it was true. Right. Uh, and if I could prove it, because I was born on my mom's birthday. And we have similarities, but we also have differences. Right. And then, you know, the more I studied it, the more I realized, oh, I see. You no, know, it's funny. We're February 19th, so we're on a cusp. But astrologically, I'd be an Aquarius and she'd be a Pisces. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's the more that I actually studied it, the more I came to believe it and then know it's true. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, and I entered it with a, a pretty healthy degree of skepticism. Uh, I did not accept it as true until it became my own truth. But you well, both, you, you, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I think you all uh, uh, were exposed to it with some sort of skepticism, a little bit of skepticism. That's healthy. Yeah. yeah. I think that's and, healthy because you can't, you know, because I, I do believe that we create create a lot of our destiny by the choices that we make in life. And so astrology just helps guide you of good times to do things and to help understand things like during Mercury retrograde, why, you know, things electrical break or why misunderstandings happen. I mean, it just it happens more. Down. Or sometimes you revisit things from the past during and you, you actually have conversations that you needed to have finished. Right. They come. They circle back around and then Mercury in the retrograde gives you the opportunity to take them forward. Yeah. This last Mercury retrograde for me helped me make some life decisions uh, that were, I think, were beneficial. Important. Yeah, yeah, they were important. And they worked out well. Yeah. So. Thank, thank God. You know, it's yeah. just so lovely. You're both like angels on earth that oh, you well. use your <laughs> gift. No, seriously, you use your gifts and your abilities <laughs> to help other people who are in your lives, which is great. I mean, you know, it's interesting. So my dad's a Sagittarius rising. So the, the rising sign astrologically, it's based on the minute that you're born and Sagittarius rising is somebody that on some level, you know, it, it's, it's, they want to, uh, it's an optimistic sign, it's but it's optimistic. also spiritual in terms of, you know, on some level reflecting like the God force and well, because, uh, Jupiter is ruled by Sag and, uh, Jupiter's, the, the most beneficent of the planets. It's one of those. It, it's, and it is considered the god for. And it's the idea that of spreading knowledge that maybe other people don't necessarily have at right. their uh, availability. And Sagittarians like to talk a lot. They, they do. They like spreading. <laughs> spread, they like spreading the word. <laughs> Wait, okay. So, okay. So, what's going on? Isn't there something going on with Jupiter right now? I read that somewhere, I thought. No, Jupiter, Jupiter's in Sagittarius. Right Jupiter now. right now is in Sagittarius. Okay. Direct recently. So it's in its home sign, meaning like with my dad, I was just talking about this earlier. Like, so my dad is new astrology that publicly. So he was saying, well, that means it's in its home. And I said, dad, what does that mean to people? Yeah. What so does that mean? It means that it's most comfortable. Meaning in Sagittarius. Because it's Wait, that what? Jupiter is most comfortable in oh, Sagittarius. Jupiter's it's most a sign that it in, represents. It. So it being there means that it's the most expansive in a good, positive way. And yeah. how does that affect all of us right now? Like generally, generally speaking. So it actually, depending upon where it hits your chart, so depending upon each sign, it'll it'll actually give expansion and blessings in different aspects of people's lives. So we could go through the different signs. Well, this is what I was actually thinking. You tell me if you want to do this. Because sometimes I think well, sometimes wait, it's... you're the producer. Right, that's right. Can I can producer. I can I blow your cover? That's right. Yes, you do. He's, that's he's, fine. What are you like a senior producer? I'm not sure what you are. I'm you're a supervisor. You're a supervisor. He's a supervising producer at Good Morning America at GMA. Oh, yes. So yeah, sure. <laughs> but I've known you forever <laughs> and when I was on Dr. Oz and right. I was yeah. going to say, so we could start with not the bad news, but where Saturn is in, a, in each of the different signs. And okay. then we can turn to where Jupiter is, which is more positive. So we okay. Go from, I, take it go, away. Take it away because I have no idea. Right. I, want you, I want you to do what you want to do. All right. So well, let's start with Aries, right? Okay. Let's start with so Aries. Saturn right now is in the 10th house. Okay. It's in Capricorn. So what does that mean? Well, Saturn is at home and it's well, you know, we can't hear your dad as well for some reason. Saturn is comfortable. 
Okay. Capricorn, and that's where it is. Because it's the ruler of Capricorn. It's the ruler of Capricorn. It's the ruler oh. of Capricorn because now is Capricorn? Is, it's in Capricorn, yes. And for Aries... But Aries, it's in the 10th house. And the 10th house, that's the career. So it pretty much means that for Aries, that this past year and into 2020, so it let, stays in a sign for about two and a half years, uh, there would be like a culmination of some sort for a career. If you've been working at your career successfully, not building it on sand, otherwise there's going to be more challenges associated with what's going on at work. It's kind of this past year and up and, and through this year into the beginning of 2020, you're kind of being able, you're having the opportunity of stepping into, you know, what you've been trying to achieve in your career, but it's not without difficulty. No, it's with difficulty because Saturn is also the task man. So, right. so you would tell the Aries person to, to persevere. Persevere. Certainly like if you've been working at something for seven years, 14 years, this should be the moment where you're either arriving there or if you're not arrived, if, if you're not getting where you've been trying to get, right? then, you know, you might be going in the wrong direction. It might be something that you kind of have to, you know, you, you'd be going through a little bit more of a thick of it with things well, right the, now. Also, the 10th house is an angular house, which gives it. It gives it strong importance. Right. It's so, a big. It's a bigger time for Aries right now. Okay. In, okay. In a bigger right. time for Aries. Yeah, but not with that. It's, it's, it's more. It's, it's challenging. With chat, but, with chat, for for not, Aries, not, sun sign, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. We're only talking sun sign. All right. Okay. So now wait. So we just gave them a little bit of bad news because it's not such bad news. It's fine. It's actually <laughs> good if you've been actually building your career on solid foundation. If you've been building it on sand. You're encountering rocky roads. But in terms of where Jupiter is for Aries, Jupiter is in ninth house. Right. So Okay. So the ninth, Jupiter is God force. Jupiter is the most beneficent of the flags. It, it's in the ninth house and it indicates that you will be, here. Aries will be dealing with foreign, uh, with foreigners. Foreign people, foreign, foreign people. Life, possibly traveling. There could be expansion luck if they travel overseas. They potentially. It's also the house of higher learning. It's if learning. they're in school, they potentially be doing better in school or have the opportunity of truly like growing their knowledge. Right. Uh, okay. Well, so. It's in, it's, comfortable place yeah in, okay in, so that's good it's also like an aries if you're thinking about going back to school right now right now is not a bad time to be going back to school you'd be if blessed you're aries. If you're thinking okay. about traveling you'd be blessed for the next year until about december okay you Air, aries people now the, the next one, one is what taurus so taurus saturn is in the ninth house so where we just said that people the, the aries are actually having luck associated saturn with taurus the Torians would have more difficulty with those things. They'd kind of be having more challenges associated with foreigners or with higher education than if they're in school. This might be the time that they're having to, you know, really work on that thesis. and Maybe it's not getting uh, approved so easily. Uh, it's, 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 there's, there's more challenges associated with all the positives that we're just saying in Aries would be experienced. Okay. So what, what do you see, what's coming up for Taurus for 2019? Anything? Jupiter would be in the eighth house. Right. The eighth house is relating to inheritances, other people's money, rebirth. Right. So if there's, God forbid, a death in a in, in a Torian's life this right. year, there's a possibility of an inheritance coming. Oh wow! Uh, expansion associated with that. Also, birth and new beginnings because where there's death, oh. There's also other people's money, so potentially taxes. Tax return to Tory might be more fortunate in terms of getting a, a more size, even though like right now anybody knows you get their tax returns. You'd actually be able to get a more sizable tax return potentially And this it year. would be indicative of a big sex life. That's true too. Because that uh, the concept of like- Did you sex. say sex girls life? The concept of like, you know how they say in the French, uh, the organism is le petit mère, <laughs> the little bad. That's kind of what the eighth house rules. Oh, so. oh well, that's good to good, know. Good, good things for Torians when it comes to sex for the next year. Right. Wow. All right. So, Gemini. are you yep. saying Gemini. are you saying it's good to date a Torian? I did not. It's not so bad this <laughs> next year. Although you're a Leo, Leo and Taurus, <laughs> not great. Yeah, but no, I mean, it's all right. It's it's okay. It's not. It's not so bad. Okay. Okay. okay so right. now let's. Now, Gemini's, yeah. you know, all the things that we just said that Torians would be having benefit. 
Geminis might be having more challenges associated with those things. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, challenges. with sex? Yeah, conception. Yeah. Conception. If they're trying to conceive, it might not come as easy as they'd hoped over the course of the next year. Right. Um, that's true. It is true. You know that from yeah. You know that is true. Um, it's just all of those things. Taxes. I mean, there might be more of a burden for Gemini's when it comes to tax year this year, or if they're dealing with uh, some sort of uh, death right. in their family and there's an inheritance situation, it might be more of a challenge. The money might not be as forthcoming over the next year. And is it um, money in general or just the taxes? It's other people's money. It's, it's not earned. Pe it's not the money that the person will earn from their career. It's money coming to them from other sources. It can also be the money of the marriage partner. That's right. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Unless you're working for the government and there's a shutdown and you're not getting your paycheck today. Well, that's right. That's right. But so now let's talk positive. Well, so well, I'll tell you why that is, though. Because why? The country is a sad, rising country. Right. So Gemini would be on the seventh, seventh house. house. Right. And the seventh house would then be the second house. Would, the eighth house would then be the second, second house, second. which is the house of earned income for people. So Santa would be there for the country. So in terms of the country and the money that it's able to actually give to people, it's its money. Right. And there would be challenges associated with But wait, with it. so when is that money going to start coming to the people? Well, that, I mean, it, it, it depends. I mean, depending upon where eclipses, we have a, a series of eclipses now over the course of the year in Capricorn and Cancer. They started about last mm -hmm. summer. Uh, okay. So really, like, you know, well, do I think the money situations are going to be resolved so quickly? Not necessarily. I actually think that I we're agree. kind of... We're in like this six month time frame from the eclipses that are happening this month to the eclipses happening over the summer that are kind of going to, we'll see plus or minus, I think if the, the eclipse happens in July, it's plus or minus like a month. So maybe like June, July, August, uh, when do people help, typically have to file their tax returns by April? April. So like, honestly, I'd say like if you typically get your tax return within a month, give it a couple more months. It might be like three months this year. Really? Uh, and then like hopefully knock on wood, uh, we're kind of like through this crisis with uh, the government. Because here's the reality. Even with the shutdown, let's say it starts up again, it's just from past shutdowns that we've had, it takes months for things kind of to work themselves out. And then there's money that's spent on the shutdown. So potentially uh, there's going to be little bits of delays. And then you know, people you just have to give some time. Do I think I think we'll probably be through it all like August, September? Wait, is the shutdown will go until then? I, it just I means think we that. may be through it soon. And the reason I'm saying that is because the initial eclipse. You think soon? Soon, in Leo, as it happened. Yeah. Oh. So he thinks we'll probably be through it maybe by the end of this month, the end of wait, next month. Wait, 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 wait. Is the president a Gemini? What is he? He's a Gemini, I believe, Leo rising. Um, so yeah, don't just, point at me. Can't. Well, no, <laughs> Gemini, he's the opposite sign of the country. So on some level, there's a partnership there between him and his, the reflection of the country. Uh, and then, you know, the, that's definitely a partnership. Yeah, yeah. And, he and, would rep, and he so would do you, th what do you think is up for him in this next year? I think he's going to have a good year. Mm. A good year. I think he's going to have a good year because don't forget he represents the father of the country, the leader right. of the country, if you will. Wow. Yeah. So I think he's going to have a good year. Wow. Okay. That's. Wait, wait. So now let's give Gemini's their good news since we told them not so good news. So Gemini, right. Jupiter's in the seventh house. So they'll actually have good luck associated with partners. Absolutely. And that's personal partnerships, business partnerships. That's, uh, why I, that's why I'm saying I think he's going to have a good. Okay, it's so actually, Gemini's, are you it's, listening? It's actually a good time if you know if you've been engaged or you've been you've been having conversations about marriage. It's actually a blessed time associated with that for Gemini. Yes. Um, wow, that's good to know. However, now I'm going to take it a step back because Saturn is in the eighth house for Gemini's. Okay. Okay. So, he basically will be dealing with other people's money, which is true. Yeah. Gemini's will be dealing with the country's with money. The, and the country's money. Right. And, uh, and there may be a renewal of sorts in terms of how things are operational. Uh huh. Because it's, a, it's a, an ending and a rebirth of sorts. 
and it won't be without challenge. And, and wait, I'll actually, I'm actually going to say something else. With, with, when you have Jupiter in your partnership house, not only does it indicate like that there's luck and expansion associated with partnership, both professionally and personally, uh-huh. there's also a certain freedom aspect. So once again, I'll say if the, if that relationship doesn't function entirely correctly, there could be a freeing aspect from whatever that situation is. But oh. whatever, the, whatever the conclusion is, right. is blessed. Right. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. Yeah. And I think Gemini's in general will be fine. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's fascinating. Now, cancer. Cancer. Wait, All right. did you say the eclipses are in cancer? So the eclipses, so eclipses tend to be like, uh, they tend to happen every six months for about like a year and a half, two years. And there are solar eclipses. And lunar lunar eclipses eclipse. in opposite signs. So cancers and Capricorns are the focus of these eclipses right now. So pretty much from last summer, uh, this month, July, and then January of next year, cancers and Capricorns should be paying attention to pivotal changes potentially in their definition of self and right. their definition of their self in relation to partnerships. And it, around those times, they could be seeing some sort of progression in terms of uh, relationships uh, in beginnings and endings. So it's almost like if there's an ending of a relationship last summer, they might see some sort of like potentiation forward happening now, again over the summer, and then again come January of next year. But beyond that, the challenges that they're dealing with well, are in partnerships because Saturn is in the seventh house for cancer. Uh, for Capricorn, Saturn is in the first. So house. Capricorns right. and so Cancer. Capricorn. We got together in a little bit, okay. but tell them about Saturn and Cancer. Yeah, Saturn, Saturn and Capricorn in the seventh house for Cancers. Saturn and Capricorn in the seventh. Well, what happens with that is that Saturn becomes the taskmaster in the seventh house, which is the house of partnerships. Okay. So there's a heavier weight associated with cancers and their partnerships. There's there's more of a heavy, you know, is this a partnership worth keeping? Is this something that, like, I really... There's a possibility of divorce. I mean, it's true. I mean, that's what it does mean astrologically. Right. Wait, mean, what? Of a di- oh, possibility of divorce for cancers. Well, now when you're talking with Aries about career and career matters, that if you're built as something built on substance, then it's going to be built and become stronger, not without challenges. But if it's built on sand and falls away for cancers, that's actually reflective in terms of their partnership houses right in now. In terms of the marriage itself. It, not in terms of not in terms of their dealing with the marriage partner. Right. right. As much with the marriage itself okay. the marriage itself will be challenged right it will not be or easy. the partnership in business right will be challenged right will be challenged and in cancer right. oh, wow right. good news is yeah jupiter in the sixth steps so they should be having some sort of like blessings in terms of the balance of work and health situations they uh-huh. should be able to get well there's two it actually could be two things it could mean that they could be getting healthier this year if they actually put their mind to getting healthier Jupiter and Cancer. Jupiter and Six Thanks for Cancer. It's also, it, re- it relates to work. The workload will become either heavier or, or, or blessed in the sense that it won't feel It'll be easier. Heavy. It'll be easier to be at work. Right. Oh. Uh, the health matters should be, if you have a, if you have a health issue, you, you should be, be able to get through it okay. It should be fine. And by December... You would have dealt with it, and then we'll be able to move on to the next. If there's a health issue with cancer, then it if it'll, there is a health issue, they'll be able to get through it. It'll you know they'll they'll be blessed in terms of whatever it is. Or if there that's is a, a good work, thing. Or if there's a work issue, the work isn't necessarily dealing with career. Okay. Work deals with labor, so to speak. So they're going to be working hard. The the cancers are going to be working hard. Yes. Yeah. But having luck with but, it, it should be lucky situation. Not as hard as they ordinarily work because it, Jupiter is protecting them to some degree. How does the how does the eclipse affect a Cancer then if it's in Cancer? I mean, it's it, it's going to it's it affects that sense of self and any partnerships that they tend a to renewal, be in. A renewal, a letting go of things. Yeah, it's ten, it tends to be indicative of that. If there's somebody, it, it tends to, eclipses tend to signify beginnings and endings, and they often are reflected in terms of actual people within a Cancer or Capricorn's life. So they may see 
a big a person of significance enter their life or a person of significance leaving their life around so the time it can, of the it can it can be an extreme either better or worse if you, and it usually is they actually say so you know like in terms of like moons and you know wiccans in terms of the whole idea right. of the moon being like that when we reach a full moon we're reaching a point of a completion and empowerment and actually yeah. like thoughts become reality they say that eclipses are actually a full the power of a full moon times three Wow. So it's like, well, you'll begin to feel it at the end of this month. Yeah. The end of because this month. When is that? Well, because the eclipse is in Leo. Right. Oh, the eclipse is in Leo. The We've had a lot eclipse. of eclipses. The lunar eclipse is in Leo. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, sp okay. but speaking of Leos, Saturn is actually in the sixth house. So I will say to you, if you have health problems this year, you really need to take care of them. If you've had something going on for a bit, you better be paying attention to it right now because you kind of want to deal with it now so it doesn't become a long-term problem over. I'm know. very on top of everything, but I mean, yeah. you never know, but I'll keep my eyes and ears open. I mean, thank yeah. God right now I feel great, but I, but, but my astrologer did warn me like, not like I'm going to be really busy in that I, I shouldn't overdo it. Well, that's the other thing. It's, it's the, the thing is when Saturn is there, it's this balance between work and health. That if your work is lopsided, you suddenly have health issues. So right. if you're not keeping the balance between those two things, now is the time that you'll be taken to test. And that's what the six tests are. So Leos right. need to be watchful of their health. That's right. Good news is Jupiter is in the fifth house. So what does that mean? That means that love matters are actually blessed right now. If you're actually looking for personal satisfaction, that's right. anything relative to personal satisfaction oh. will be achieved if you work at it at all. Which is what you actually see happening with you right now. Right. You know? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm blessed. Good things are happening. As also represents not the marriage itself, but the marriage partner. Yeah. So you might, if you're not married... You might have an opportunity to meet someone that you really care things about. Things that you're passionate about. That's what they things keep telling me. That's, are black. That's what all the astrologers keep telling me. It's true. I mean, right now it's true. All right. But the people who people will be having a challenge there are the Virgos. Virgos are actually going to be having challenges associated with those matters. If that's also for like, children. Like, what yeah. do you think so, with Virgos? Personal satisfaction. Anything relative to personal satisfaction. So, you know, if Virgos could potentially, and this is a, these patterns that we're talking about in terms of these challenges actually go through the entire year. They actually right. go into 2020. Okay. So, potentially, there are challenges associated with children, there are challenges associated with things you're passionate about. They tend to have more of a weight associated with them for Virgos. Yeah. And, and if it's your, if it's business that satisfies you personally, it might relate to business. It might be more challenging. Yeah. Well, well yeah, that's what Saturn is. Wait, wait. So, so Virgo is going to have more challenges business wise, work wise. No, we're, we're talking about Virgo. Right? Whatever you're most passionate about in terms of Virgos, that is where the challenge is going to lie in terms of your life right now, because that's where Saturn, the heavy taskmaster, is. But Jupiter is actually in their fourth house. So, there's actually blessings associated with their home. If they're going to oh. move, now would be a good time associated with their home. For uh, if, if, if they want to like actually expand their home, redo their home, redecorate anything that satisfies them relative to their home, it's an opportunity to do. It is is it a, is for, it a for time the for, end of 2019? Is it a time for yeah. nesting for Virgos or just redoing your home? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. No, it's a good time for nesting. Yeah. Okay, um, so um, we know okay. who's not a good time for Libras. Libras in their actual home may be having more challenges because that's where Saturn is right now. Right, so they may find that in their home they can't afford to do things. That Wait, they are you want. talking about Libras? Libras, right. yes. We just we moved on to we Libras. Moved on to Libra. But wait, here's the other. Which, which parents is the fourth house rule? The fourth house. It's the fourth house rules. If you're a man, it's, it's your mother. It's your mother. And if and you're, if a, you're woman, a woman, it's, it's your, your father. It tends to indicate the parent that's the most significant in terms of your upbringing. That's right. So, so potentially, there could be challenges associated with that parent for Libras this year. So they might actually be going through their own 
difficulties that Libras then have to deal with. Dealing with the parent could actually be difficult for the Libra over the next year. So sun sun sign Libras have to be really careful with relationships going through. With their parents, with with their their parental relationship. Or what if their parents are deceased? In their home. They shouldn't be overspending. What if their parents are, oh, they shouldn't be overspending. But what if their parents are deceased? So the energy of people who are like. And then that, then that energy takes its form in the terms of the home. It's this idea of. The fourth house represents where we come from so, and, right. and kind of where we house ourselves. So that's where their challenges are right now. That's where most of their challenges are. It also represents to some degree, it, it emerges as an inheritance factor. Inheritance. Because, yeah, because any inheritance might be applied to your home itself somehow. Um, good news is... Yeah. They have blessings. They actually have blessings because of Jupiter is in their third house. So with siblings, they'd actually have more fortunate experiences. If they're going to go right. on like short journeys, they'd be more blessed to those. In terms of their communication abilities this year, they'd be more ready and easily able to express themselves so that what they express and say just but, comes more. But the uh, fourth house is a stronger house. Okay. The house are stronger. So more likely than because not. It's an angry right. House. So more likely than not, the challenges associated with home and potentially a parent would be more significant than the blessing. I'm I'm gonna call this segment I've got good news and I got bad news. That's right. That's what it is. It's good news and bad news. Um Okay, so okay, so so Scorpio. how can Libras fix that? Can they do anything about how do they it? Fix it? I mean you have to realize like everybody has challenges, so it's kinda like don't overspend on your home. Yeah, not, be careful. You know what teaches you? That you must deal with whatever the circumstance is. Right. It's actually, the, it's the, it helps you learn and grow and become more of an adult in a way that you weren't before. That is great. Let's go on to Scorpio. So Scorpio would tend to have more challenges associated with siblings. Uh, with short, short distance travel, they wouldn't right. be going too far. And their communication, there might actually, you know, the way they want to express themselves might be more challenging. They might, they, they might over the course of the next year, might feel as if they're not being as heard in, uh, in the way that they want to communicate to people. It's kind of like, it's right. almost like talking through a wall. Okay. It's like, it's almost, for, for Scorpios, it will almost be like, they're living in a retrograde existence like Mercury. Right. That's wow, right. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. that's profound. That's right. Yeah. For this year, Scorpios might feel that Mercury in retrograde sort of experience. Good news is. Good news. They're going to be money because Jupiter is in their second house. And, you know, that's actually they have the opportunity to be making more money this their year. Personal finances. Oh, that's a good thing. That's right. So they've actually invested in things. If they've taken their own money and put it into things, there's the opportunity for, to see growth with that money yeah, over the absolutely. next year. So that's good for Scorpios. Uh, yeah, so it's a good, it's that's a good, a good money thing. year for Scorpios. And what you know, about... Not, go ahead. You know what's not such a good money-making year for? Sagittarians. Sagittarians. Really? That's right. It's not. I mean, it's going to be more challenging. They might find that they have more expenses this year. Uh... Yeah, there's more of a just there's more of a more, challenge, more of a with, challenge money. with money in general. Yeah. And because the nation is a Sagittarius rising nation. Yeah. It's really like it it's, would it's, be it's, indicative it's, of what's going on with the country right it, now. It's a moment for the country to grow up in terms of how it handles its money. I mean, that's oh. really what's going on. Um good news is good news is yeah. that it's uh well, it's not such great news. Uh, Jupiter's in the first house. Right. So Jupiter in the first house is good because yeah. people will look at you and, and appreciate who you are. They will also, it will also means you have a tendency to gain weight. Right. right. I was going to say with Sagittarians. Sagittarian. Oh my goodness. Tony's like going, like, cause he, we were just talking well, about how he just gained well, weight. Well, I Sagittarius. So even when Jupiter's there and it's in its native element, there is this up. Op- Sagittarius, because if it's such like an optimistic sign and it looks towards expansion, it sometimes does it too much. So it's somewhat, and that's kind of where the weight idea comes. And also, like on some level, you might have a tendency to want to gamble. Right, right. Oh. You take, you take. I just said to, 
I, that's so it's, funny. I just said, I'm sorry. The only good news about it is even if you take these unnecessary chances, you don't get too hurt. You don't get too hurt. Okay, so like, this not, is good. Yeah, right. This is so uh, good. You know, I, I just have to take a, I just have to tell you guys, you two are yeah. so cute together and you you're talk I feel like I'm in another like when I was in the Netherlands and they would be talking and communicating with language, each other. I and I didn't understand I a damn thing they were saying. That's how I feel with you guys. It's like you've got this like shorthand. I know. I only say I, I'm, try, I'm 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 trying my best to communicate in a way that makes sense. I know, like when we start speaking to each other, someone's like, "Oh, well, then Jupiter's trying Saturn, and it's in the fourth house to the first house." It's so a, of course, it's amazing. Happening. It's amazing. Okay, so okay, so now Capricorn. Right. So then Capricorns. This is a challenging time, but it's also because Saturn is in its first their first house. So this is a time for them really to be growing up, coming into their own, but not without challenges. But Saturn is very comfortable. Right. So if a Cap Capricorns are actually one of the most accomplished signs there are. They like accomplishing things and showing like, here's everything that I achieved. And what will what will happen is instead of being a taskmaster, you may be viewed as the teacher. Right. You finally get the opportunity to stand and shine in that role that you like to like play. Like they become so a teacher? It's not... What's for, for Capricorn? Yeah, but so it's, it's really for Capricorns having Saturn in their first house and the it's, Saturn it's placement. In terms of the rest of the signs where we were talking about all of the other challenges, right. for Capricorn, it's less that. It's more that they'll be in a position of possibly being the taskmaster themselves. Yeah. Oh, they're I, the taskmaster, master, but that's good because Capricorns get things done. Yeah, yes. 100%. It's a very so, traditional So this is kind of interesting. This is kind of where that whole concept of like Saturn and Jupiter flip a little bit. So Jupiter is actually going to be in the 12th house. The 12th house is the house of restriction and undoing oneself and psychological, uh, you know, storage. It's, it's so, confinement. It's hospitalization. So Jupiter being there kind of expands those qualities. So there is the potential... You're, you're, they're protected. Like if they suddenly found themselves in a hospital this year, it shouldn't be surprising, but they'd be protected in some way. They would in be terms fine. Or, yeah. or they may find, you may take an alternative thing, even in as much as they're protected. Okay. What's the good news? Well, that's the good news. Oh, that, that they're well, protected. That they're protected. I'll also say that, well, the good news is that they're, you know, they pretty much have Saturn at their disposal this year. It's good. So Saturn plays a good role for them. The Jupiter... It's the, the bad news, good news kind of flips. I will say that if there's a lot of psychological baggage that a, 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 a Capricorn might have been dealing with, right. this is the time kind of to get it out. It might feel like, oh, wow, well, how heavy this is. They right. need to it, it, it is. It's like a cleansing. So there's that good. opportunity. So that's, he that's healthy. That's right. If they feel restricted by any psychological baggage, it, it does have the opportunity to, to reveal it, it and let it go. Those confinements in terms of like, metaphorically hospitalizations, metaphorical prisons right. have the opportunity to, to be releasing themselves this year. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So then, Aquarians, on the other hand, this guy, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, so Saturn is now in my 12th house. Uh, so that kind of indicates on some level that there are more restrictions in terms of like psychological stuff. I've been feeling it on some level and I've kind of been like dealing with like, you know, politics work situation, stuff like that. You, you, you There's more of, you, I, I've been feeling I'll, like You should up. call me. I'll read for you. But uh, it would uh, also be restrictions in a kind of strange manner. Right. So there's so restrictions. Been, yeah. I've been, I've been dealing with those things some. So, I mean, it's the truth. Yeah. You know? okay. I didn't but, think of it in terms but, of... But it is true. Right? But I will say, nor my blessings have come from. They've come in the 11th house, and this comes for Aquarius, too. Stupiders in their 11th house. Meaning that friends uh, in group situations in high me. places are there for me. So they're like, like and the secret enemies. enemies will be exposed. That's right. Secret enemies will be exposed over the course of the next year. Right. So yeah, it's kind of like everything kind of reveals itself. So it's kind of like if you actually are looking to expand your horizons, turn to your friends. Right. And they should be able to help you. Turn to groups. If you're like a loner in general, Aquarians tend to be people people. Uh, but they also tend to be individuals that like to like do their own thing. Now is a time kind of to not just do your own thing, to kind of seek the advice and counsel of other people, friends, well, and they'll be able to benefit. And, 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 maybe, and maybe an Aquarian would do people's um, charts, 
and do astrology? Well, I mean, start. Sure. I mean, look what I'm doing Would right you now. start? Well, here's the deal. Yeah. Uranus, which is rule, one of the rulers of Aquarius rules Uranus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? And Uranus, Uranus is in the Aquarius. third house. Yeah. Uranus rules Aquarius. And it's in the third house, which is the house of communication. So it's going to open the doors to being able to communicate more easily in rather strange ways. Right. People won't necessarily understand precisely what you're talking about, but you'll get it across. Wait, wait yeah. a second. Do we have your website up if somebody wants to have an astrology hey, reading? I don't do I don't do that that off. I mean, I you know, they can go to my website. You can go to my you know what you can do? Go to my website, friend me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, and write your question there. I'm like much better at like answering okay. like individual questions. Okay, like, I, I don't do I don't want to put you under more stress than you That's have to because you're no, I, I do. I love I love answering people's questions. So if you have like a personal question, give me go go into one of those things: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You have it give up? me your birth information to the best of your ability. If you know the minute you were born, great. The day, the year, the location, okay. the month, like and all of that what, information. What's your, what's your website in case? What's your website? I like doing it that way. I like doing it like in public and you know private one-on-one -on -one readings. I could do, I honestly. I have everybody at work always asking me to do it, so it becomes a part of my job anyway. Oh, I you know bet. What I Wait, what's your website be in case people are only listening the to this? Theastrologyspot.com, and then that'll point you the in the direction. Theastrologyspot.com. Okay, right. that's, oh, you're so dear. So you're helping everybody at Good Morning America. Now we know the that's secrets right. behind the scenes. That's the secret, that's the secret, the secret of my career. <laughs> this know? is your career. I think you, I, I hope that we talk. I will, if you need any insight from all my dead relatives, I'm happy to help you. I always appreciate from, your insight. From your dead relatives, rather. But no, seriously, if you need any help, I'm happy. To, I'll see you in New York. I'm going to see you in New York. Okay, good. We'll see each other in New York. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go, go, okay. Go, go, go. So, okay. So we've got one so, okay. more. So now we can talk about Aquarians are having blessings associated with friends. That's where Pisces are going to actually feel more challenged. Now. Okay. Uh, you know, kind of friends that are not what they thought they were will probably disappear. Uh, really? And they probably have been disappearing over this past year. They're going to kind of continue to disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, but then those that actually are substantive will actually, you know, you'll, you'll you kind of know this is a time where they'll learn who their friends are. Uh, well, that's why I say the 11th has represents secret enemies. Right. So, secret right. enemies. That's right. Secret enemies. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, your friendships is also represents Those people who enemies. might be presenting to be your friend. Right. And really are. Uh, so that's good. So that's where the challenge lies in terms of Saturn's placement for Pisces. You just have to stay away. It's like, yeah, keep your eyes uh, open. Uh, just social activity. That's right. Social activities, group associations. Yeah. Wow. Uh, um, the blessings for Pisces are associated with their career. With the 10th. That's right. So like Pisces actually having blessings associated with career. They'll get promotions. That's right. That's right. Oh, so yeah. that's the good news. There's promotions yeah. for Pisces. But that's kind of why secret enemies may suddenly be revealing themselves and friends oh. who you thought maybe were your friends maybe aren't your friends because they're seeing you rise. And then maybe they're suddenly like, oh, that's not so but cool. Changes in their finances. Right. And I would venture to guess that the changes in their finances will be beneficial. Yeah. Changes yeah. in their finances beneficial for Pisces people. It's almost like also like because Jupiter's in their 10th house and the 10th house doesn't just represent career. It also is like a destiny point. It's kind of like where they head them, where they're headed in their lives. There are right. blessings associated with that. So if they've kind of been, you know, it's kind of like if, if, if they haven't been able to get that opportunity associated with what they want to be doing for their career, it mm -hmm. should be presenting itself now over the course of the next. Year. So oh, I always say the universe tips us off. So they're going to be tipped off. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. You guys are amazing. I mean, really together, you're like talking to one person, but there's two of you. It's just it's so like it's adorable and so special. I, you, you really warm my heart. I'm so grateful to you guys for being here. Well, listen, I hope that we're able to help people. I hope that we've informed people. I'm positive. Kind of, I'm kind of positive. See the way that the, the cycle of astrology works and how like it all kind of plays into every sign where none of us are independent. We all work together and it all plays into itself. And that's kind of, I think, what we were able to express. And again, I think a lot of it has to do with how Oh, yeah. We've got like a zillion comments and shares and stuff on social media already from you guys. Right. So, 
So and if that's a good thing. Go find me on Facebook. I'll answer your questions. I promise. If I don't answer them immediately, it's not because I'm ignoring you. I really do want to. I'll get to everybody. Oh, somewhere. well, the, you you both are just really gifted and, and, and so special. Will you come back again together? I mean, it's up to him. I'll always be there for you, Shara. You ask my dad. Will you yeah, come back? He'll come back. I don't know. You're. I mean, the two of you. To... I'll, I'll tell you why I have reservations. He's very shy. Now I'm not shy at all, actually. But I have reservation because occasionally you'll see things. And why I've not been interested. This is true, and this is what turns me off occasionally. From why I've history. not done charts for quite a while is yeah. I saw things I did not want to see. Oh, and I understand that. That's right. And people are like, always like, always tell me everything. And it's kind of like, I understand sure you, that you I don't, don't you don't want to give bad news. That's right. right. And, and the reality is, you know, there are people who deal with astrology and their interpretation of what's going on. Right. Means negative. That's right. I've always leaned more positive. Right. But when I saw real negative things going on, particularly with people I love. Well, what I've experienced with both of you is that, even if there was some news that was like a little frustrating, there was a way to handle it and deal with it. Always, there always is. I mean, and I so actually think I, 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 I'm grateful that you that you have given us this knowledge and this wisdom, and I hope you both have an amazing 2019. And oh, I'll see you. I'll well. see you soon. And Tony too. Tony too. Thank you. Oh, he he says thank you. Okay. Take good care and um Sorry, I'll see you in a couple of weeks in New York. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I look forward to seeing it and, and okay, seeing you sure. and whatever you need from me, I'm here for you. Okay, I love you. I love you more. Um, Take good <laughs> that's care. A line. That's my line to my kids. Well, that maybe that's I'm why I said it. Maybe that's why that then then I then I feel blessed that I said the same thing you say. Okay. Okay. Take good care. All the best. Bye bye. Okay, just stay seated until we're off. Okay. Okay. Take care. All right, everybody. That is it for tonight. In um, next week, I've got Glynis McCants telling us about our numerology, the numbers lady for 2019. So you gotta tune in next week. And if you need anything, uh, readings classes you you want to know more about uh world of wonder and reading the the drag queens just go to char.net c-h-a-r.net and um i wish you a wonderful wonderful healthy happy successful new year and remember intuition will take you places logic never could god bless you be well